Hello everyone, today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to sidechain in FL Studio 20. This is going to be two different methods, one of them rather easy and free, and the other one more advanced and using a paid plugin known as FabFilter Pro MB. So starting things off with the free and easier method, this is going to be using Fruity Limiter, but overall the setup for both of these methods are the same, so feel free to follow along anyway. What you want to do to start things off is take your kick, and you're going to want to place it a second time in the track so that way you do have two of the same kick in the same location. Then, you want to click on this button in the top left of your second sample, and hit the Make Unique button. This will basically make a unique version of the same sample that you could put on a different mixer track, which is what we're going to need to do. But before we do that, we want to shorten the sample all the way. Now right now, if you were to listen to this, it would be playing the kick drum itself as well as this really short version. So you see right now, because it's so short, you're not really going to notice. But what we want to do from here is move the second one to a new mixer track. This is going to be your kick sidechain trigger location. And I do recommend labeling things just so that way you don't get confused. But once you've done that, you want to make sure that it is unlinked from the master. So mine's already done, but if you hadn't done that already, it would look like this. And then you just want to click on that, so that way it's no longer going to your master, meaning it will not put out any sound. You'll notice here if I try to listen to it, there's no sound, that's because it's unlinked. And from this point, you want to put this wherever your kick drum is in your project. So you see here I've got this pattern for a drum and bass track going, so overall it's really easy. And if your kick does stay in the same location, you're free to copy and paste it, and then change up any variations that you may have, anything like that. But you just want to get these all aligned perfectly, and then you're ready to sidechain. Okay, so we've got that done here. This is on every single kick. And from here, what we're going to do is choose our first element that we're going to sidechain to. You might find that you're doing this a lot of times in projects, and if you want to save up CPU, you could put things into different buses and then just do it to that bus. But to start things off from the very beginning, I want to sidechain my kick to my bass. So you'll see if I listen to this right now, there is no sidechain happening, and this is going to distort because of the nature of them. You can see that here with an oscilloscope. And that's something I will get more into in a moment for the more advanced method. But what you want to do from here is select your kick sidechain trigger, and then right click on your base element or whatever you're sidechaining to, and hit sidechain to this track. Now click on that mixer, and then at the very end of your chain, we're going to add an instance of Fruity Limiter. Here it is. I recommend turning your ceiling all the way up, because if not, if you have something that goes over zero, it'll try to limit it, which we don't want in this instance. And then go over to the compression tab. Now you're going to see this button here for sidechain. You right click on that, select your kick sidechain, and now you are ready to begin. So for the most extreme example, we take the threshold all the way down, and then we could just adjust knee and ratio. These settings, I like to just use my ears to kind of figure out what I like depending on the sound itself. Because I'm using a bass sound, I do want it to try to go to complete silence, if not just for a little bit. But all in all, the most important knob that you need to know is the release one right here. So this controls how long it takes for your sidechain to come back. If we listen to it now at default, it'll sound like this. Now that, I think, is really cool for a stylistic choice, but it's not for this track. That is totally something you could do for any track, though. But in this track specifically, I think it wants to be quick, kind of unnoticeable. And to do that, we want to just take this down and just kind of listen to it while we do that. Somewhere around there, and this you can see in the top left by my project name, it tells you how long that is in milliseconds. That's about 34, and I think that sounds pretty good. I've lowered my ratio a bit, just getting a different sound. I think that sounds a little better, and that's what we're going to keep it at for now. And the reason I've done the bass separate is because that is the one that's going to conflict with the kick the most, and I thought that would be really important to get under control. That is the really easy, simple method to sidechain using Fruity Limiter. But like I said, we do also have something a lot more advanced in here that I think is going to help a lot of you out if you do happen to have Pro MB. So the way I'm going to set this up, this is actually multi-band sidechaining. I'm going to take every element in my track that I feel needs a sidechain, and I'm going to put that on one mixer channel. Now obviously they're still going to exist on their own, it's just going to be bust to one. So you see I do have a lot of melodic elements here. We're going to take this first one, the pad, and put it on 17 because that's my first free mixer here. Same thing with the bass, and basically everything that's making sound in this project that I want to sidechain. So we've done that, they're all going there now. And you'll notice once again I've deleted that first one so it's no longer sidechained, it's going to sound like this. So overall it sounds fine, but it's not being sidechained and there is a bit of clashing there that we're going to fix, and Pro MB is going to make this really easy. So same thing as before, we are going to sidechain our kick sidechain trigger to that bus, and again, you do that just by right-clicking down here and hitting sidechain to this track. Now on that track, we're going to load an instance of Pro MB. And the very first thing you want to do is click on this gear symbol, then click here. 
go into the processing tab, and then you see number two, stereo sidechain, right click and set that to your kick trigger once again. Now, in Pro MB, what's really interesting and what sets it apart from Fruity Limiter is we could do multiband sidechaining very easily. Now, I like to break my sounds up into groups of three. First, I'll make a band that goes up to about 150. And this is so that way it gets everything 150 and below. This is the one that we kind of push hard because it is the base sidechain. And what you want to do from there is open up the Expert tab, click on Free and External, and then something else very important you want to make sure that you do is turn your attack all the way down to zero. That is because this controls how long it takes for the sidechain to start, and obviously you want that to be instant, you don't want your sidechain to be starting on a delay. Or at least I don't in this instance, I want it to be precise. But from here we are going to solo this band and take a listen while we sidechain. Okay, so what I want to do first off is take my range all the way down, because like I said this is a bass sound, I want to sidechain it the hardest, we're going to do the same with threshold. And again, you want to pay attention most to release because this controls how long it takes to come back in. And like I mentioned earlier, we could use an oscilloscope to get this really precise. So if we do zoom in quite a bit here, we can now control this so that way we're not losing any bass. So if I could actually freeze this here, I'll try to show you what I'm looking for. You see where my kick ends and then over here is where my bass is beginning. We're trying to minimize the gap where there's no bass. Overall, I've almost got it pretty good, but it looks like we can go a tiny bit more and then just go ahead and look at it again here. That looks pretty good to me. That's what I'm looking for. And that is what I mentioned in my previous tutorial as well. Some people wanted me to go more in depth about that. So I hope that does make some sense to you. That's kind of what I'm looking for with my bass side chain specifically. Now we're going to make a new band. This one, I don't really have hard numbers that I like to go up to. Just because it's really dependent on the track, I find myself maybe sometimes going to around 5,000, but that is not a hard number that you need to follow. This is basically just my mid sidechain band. And the same thing, we are going to set this to free and external, lower our attack all the way, and then sidechain to feel with the rest of it. We could also solo it, like I said once again, so we're not hearing any of the other bands. So that's a really heavy one. We could do that stylistically. But like I said, again, I just want it to be more transparent, so we'll lower it. And we are going to do one more just for the very tops of our track, filling out the rest of the spectrum. Set that to free and external once again, lower the attack, and do this one last time. So there's so little high end, I can actually barely hear anything. There's not much here. But we'll just go ahead and set this up just so it's still doing it anyway. Because there are some higher elements that come in later like that. Okay, cool. So that is how I sidechain with Pro MB. Another really good method as well is sidechaining your snare. Sometimes you could overlook that and it's not always necessary. But I do quite like the sound of it, it makes it stick out just a little bit. And it's the same process except rather than duplicate your kick, you would just do it to your snare. Put that wherever your snare goes in the track and do the same thing with a new instance of Pro MB under it. But now we're going to take a listen. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, drop a like on it and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Also, side note, this intro is very quiet compared to the rest of the track. I will fix that later, but here you go. Enjoy. Have a good day.